Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to carry out a proper bench test of our Istabreeze i1500 wind turbine. In the last video we carried out some much needed repairs after its first year of service. We also fitted some modifications like the uprated slip ring, soldered up the internal connections, eliminating the ceramic connector block which is a known weak point, and fitted two brand new SKF bearings on either end of the main shaft. So today we're going to do an open circuit test and an under load test to see how the repair has been successful and what readings can we get from it here on the workbench. So here's the setup. So we're running our now modified i1500 through its own control unit which is also modified with an amps gauge so we can get a proper reading of the power. It's being powered by two lead acid batteries put together in series to make 24 volt. These batteries are slightly failed. The reason why I'm using them is that they won't fully charge, which will prevent the automatic brake from kicking in too soon on the control unit, stopping the test. We also have an additional load of this DC motor, which we can use to suck extra power as we're generating it during the test. And the whole thing is then being driven by a 700 watt drill, which should get us above the claimed 1000 RPM that is to breeze specify. The first test then is open circuit power, sometimes called a wild AC. Don't know why they call it that, but anyway. So just tapped into two of the phases and we're gonna read in volts AC on the multimeter. Istabri's specifications state that the turbine is rated at 1000 RPM, which should be between 80 to 90 volts. So what we're verifying here is that we're spinning it fast enough and that the circuits are intact and working. So the highest open circuit voltage reading we got was 129.6, which is excellent. That indicates that the repairs have been successful and that we've also exceeded the 1000 RPM that Istabreeze state as their operating speed. The reading according to Istabreeze at 1000 RPM should be 80 to 90 volts. Good to know that it can well surpass that if required. So the next thing to do now is to set up the load test. For the load test then, the generator is connected with the three phases going into the controller as normal which is going to our 24 volt battery bank. And I'll also be connecting the 24 volt motor then to that to suck up the power as we're generating it. It's worth mentioning at this stage that I'm not gonna be able to spin up the generator anywhere near as fast as we did for the open circuit test. This is due to the magnetic fields inside creating a huge resistance to turning. But we should be able to spin it up to somewhere between 200 and 500 RPM. I'll set up a camera looking directly at the gauge there. We can see what readings we get from it. The first test we'll do without the motor running, just with the battery soaking up the power and see what readings we can get. When I approach the braking voltage, I'll switch it off. We'll go switch on the motor to take more power and we'll repeat the test. So here we go. One amp so far, and you can really see the resistance in the generator there now. The drill's really having a hard time turning. Six amps, you can hear the drill is broken away, and feel it in my hand as well. And there's the brakes, okay. Now before I release the magic smoke from the drill, let's just reset that. And we'll turn on the motor, try and suck some of that power. Hopefully the motor doesn't fly off. Alright, let's try it again. We're getting 10 amps. The drill is really having a hard time here. I can smell burning. 
Power levels are dropping. Okay. I have found the magic smoke in the drill. So that was a successful bench test. We managed to generate 10.4 amps at just under 20 volts, which works out at just a shade over 200 watts here on the bench. And you can see how that drill was really struggling. Gives you a good idea of how strong the magnetic fields get inside these permanent magnet alternators. There's a lot of other takeaways from this as well though. Unfortunately, I had to cut the test short because the drill was beginning to burn out. This is a 700 watt drill. We were putting in 700 watts and all we got was 200 watts out the other side. Kind of highlights the inefficiencies of these generators as well. However, last year during normal operation, we managed to get a reading of 34 amps at just over 26 volts in a 28 mile an hour wind. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. You can see it yourself and check it out. That would kind of indicate just how efficient the blades are and how well the blades work from Mr. Breeze. But on the other hand, does it beg the question of, was there over 2000 watts of potential wind energy available that wasn't being harnessed? So guys, that is the bench test results for the Istabreeze i1500. I would recommend getting one, or perhaps one of the larger models if they're within your budget. We found it to be an invaluable resource last year, particularly during the winter months. So I hope you found the video useful guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks a million for watching. I'll see you in the next one.